So I've been wanting to chat about something that's been on my mind for a while. How you can actually grow your own startup with zero investment originally. Over the last 18 months, I've managed to launch my app idea without raising investment. So in the startup world today, there's a lot of emphasis on raising money. Raising money can be used as a comparable metric for how well your startup is actually doing. Often people will assume that the startups who raise the most money are actually the most profitable startups. Of course, this looks impressive, raising 4 million, 5 million for your seed round. This could be an indicator of a successful startup for the average person who wants to start a company. Unless you have thought of the next Uber or the next Amazon, it's more than likely that investors won't be knocking at your door. So you have to find a way to build your company without making a raise initially. So how do you go about doing that? Now, I'd like to preface this entire thing by saying that I'm not an expert at all. And a lot of what I talk about here uh, can be found in uh, a lot of the articles that Paul Graham from Y Combinator has talked about. And in general, a lot of the teachings at Y Combinator. I'm also going to speak experientially on how I've managed to get my app actually launched and into the world. Um, and I'm very much still on my journey with my startup. Um, so take everything I say with a pinch of salt. These are just my opinions. So the problem founders face when they start off, they have an idea, but they don't have the skills or the capital to build a product that they desire. So you could, in theory, learn the skills to develop the product. However, maybe you don't want to be a software engineer or maybe you don't want to actually physically manufacture your product. So you're going to require some sort of labor to build that product, which will require either a capital or some sort of equity to be given away. Now, an obvious solution to that would be, okay, I'm gonna chase an investor to give me a quarter of a million pounds to then pay employees. However, as I said, unless you're building a unicorn product that is a one in a million, at least starting off investment won't be that easy to come around. So you're gonna to have to find an alternative. So going a bit into my story, in year one, I spent a lot of time actually talking to customers and this was actually good because I learned in more detail the pain points that golf clubs faced. What I did was I physically drove around golf clubs. This was before the whole Zoom era where everyone, you know, spoke online. So I, I actually drove around to the clubs. So this was good as I learned about the pain points of my potential customers. However, what I did wrong in the first year, I spent zero time actually building a product or even a prototype. And this was a fatal flaw to my progress. Without actually building a product, when I went to pitch in either competitions or for grant funding, or even speak to my users, words can only describe so much when you're talking about something. However, if you have a physical prototype in front of someone, they're gonna be much more likely to believe what you're saying and actually be more bought into the product. So this theory of building a product very quickly, uh, getting something out there and then testing it was something that I looked into more deeply. And especially when I came across Y Combinator's content online, a lot of that resonated with me. Um, and I began looking more into the lean methodology of startups. So the lean process is essentially building something minimal going out testing and for any software developers out there working in sprints to iterate your product um not not necessarily pivot your product but make small incremental changes that will then um let you build a product that the market desires so this is what i did next i went to paper and actually sketched out what i thought would be uh the entirety of my app i made another mistake where i basically sketched out the entire app and I should have focused on a few features, which is what I then did later. But then I found the tools of Adobe XD and Figma. Um, now I would use Adobe XD now, but at the start I used Figma, which was just as good. Um, this was great as it allowed me, who is a complete design novice, to actually build a functional prototype myself of what the app would look like. And this was a good idea as when I went to pitch for grant money, then the people understood what my app did. And when I went to my customers, the same occurred. They understood what the function of my app was and the problem I was trying to solve. This resulted in me earning some funding, which then allowed me 
um, to get a product actually built um, through hiring a UX designer and a software engineer contractually. So in this phase, it, this was great as I got the product built. However, in the first phase of our development, I contracted out um, to a guy who worked full time. And while he did a very good job, I believe contracting out is maybe not such a great idea as especially for software engineers, as we only got one hour per week on a call with them. And we had an entire spec to discuss, go over. What you actually want with your startup team is people who are willing to commit disproportionate amounts of hours to help you work on your product in some return of value. Now, I was lucky to meet a guy who actually caddies with me in Castle Rock Golf Club, who was a software developer who then wanted to join the project. And I started paying him a little bit per month and I realized that I was creating a core team, which then I can meet with. Thus, our learnings from the previous sprint and then start implementing small changes. This is what we've been doing over the last four or five months. And we managed to actually make a functional prototype with a small team of three of us and get two golf clubs on board, which we're now trialing with. Once I got a developer on board that really liked the product, that I was paying a small amount per month, this really sped up our process. If you're someone, you know, sitting now with an idea, but not sure what the first steps are to take, from my experience, there's a couple of things or a couple of options that you, you have. First thing you could do proactively is to find a skillful group of co-founders and get them excited about your product or idea. Most importantly, you want to find co-founders that are actually capable of building your minimum viable product that you can actually put out into the market. If there's a skill gap there, so for example, if you're wanting to build a app and you don't have a software developer, that will be a blocking point to your product actually reaching market. The advantages of having a small team around your product and people that are passionate about it is that it reduces costs. And if you can get a co-founding team that splits equity at the start, this is a very useful thing to have for your startup um, as it will also provide you with support whenever things aren't going well. On that point, I would recommend your co-founders to be people that you know prior to uh, the creation of your startup or idea. So these people can be found in your social circle, maybe they're your friend in uni, maybe they're your coworker. What I would hesitate to do is finding a co-founder uh, through a LinkedIn advert or through maybe joining a program as if you don't have that bond with someone before you start, it, whenever things get tough, they may be more likely to quit as they don't have that deep emotional connection to yourself or the product. The second thing which you can do, um, and there's very low barrier to entry to this, and you can do this for free, is to start building something yourself as soon as possible. So even if you don't have a software developer on board, you can still go to design tools. I'll actually link below um, the design tools I use to create my original prototype. Uh, these will be Adobe XD and Figma. You can use both, they're both very good. And I personally prefer Adobe XD now as my UX designer uses it. However, both are grand. This means that when you're speaking to users, they understand what you're doing. And whenever you do go pitch for either grant money or competitions, this will mean you're more likely to succeed as people understand what you're doing. Experience as well. It's best at the start to reduce your marketing expenditure by recruiting your users manually. So what I mean by this is that instead of putting out Facebook ads, targeting users, you're more than likely building a product that you intimately know the pain point of, and you're trying to help the people in your industry solve that problem. So your first users should be, you know, people you know quite well. I would start looking for people who have the same pain point as you and start talking to them about the product, start showing them the designs you're making and, you know, trying to get them on to pilot your app or product as soon as possible. As well as this, you know, I, I'm saying, you know, build a small team and stuff, but there are expenses you have to incur as a startup. 
uh, things like legal, legal contracts. Maybe you have to pay for an accountant if you don't want to bring all those in-house. So you may want to pitch for a little bit of grant money to get you off and running. Or grant funding. You want to try and seek grant funding if possible that has a high likelihood of you actually getting the funding. Uh, things like uh, competitions in which hundreds of startups actually enter might not be the best idea as far as an effort to result ratio. So I'd be very careful as to what competitions or grants you actually enter. Another alternative for that is to start a side hustle with you and your co-founders to actually raise a bit of money, which you can then use to build a very basic version of your app or service. So there, there's so many out there now, but just putting a few extra hours a day into selling stuff on eBay, maybe crypto is your thing, maybe working an extra job for a few hours in the evening. I was lucky that I was still in university when I created my product. So a lot of the money I raised was through competitions and grants. In your area, there will hopefully be um, options for that. However, if worst comes to the worst, you can together as a team start a side hustle to then raise whatever you need to build the first product. And it might be a lot less than you think. So in conclusion, these are just my thoughts on the topic of starting a company on zero investment. It is entirely possible. Once you've created a bit of momentum around your startup and you're starting to get demand from customers and wanting to scale up, and then you can go on to seek investment. I hope that some of this stuff is helpful for people that maybe have just thought of an idea or are still at the very early stage. I'm keen to report any learnings I have back to this YouTube channel while I'm still on this journey. If you like this sort of content, leave your comments down below and what is the best bit of advice you've got on your business journey. Thanks for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.